Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and today I'm going to do a little what's in your pack gear list video specific to winter, uh, talking 10 to 20 degrees or so. Um, this video is kind of going to be, could be two different videos. Uh, it's either going to be a standalone video, I'm going to show you everything in the pack right here, break it all down for you, and it can also be kind of a companion video to my recent full length video called Snow Hiking in Vermont, uh, Winter Backpacking. If uh, you've already seen that full length video, then now you get to have a closer look at the gear I actually used on that little adventure. And for those of you who haven't seen it, if you enjoy this video, then you can go over there and see how the trip actually went using this gear. Most of the time, if I'm going to do a gear video, as far as what I'm packing, I'll do that before I go on the trip because I've already got everything organized and everything. So uh, in this case, because of timing, I didn't do that. So the downside for me is I put everything back together here to create an accurate representation of what I had. The upside for you, the viewer, is that we get to talk about things with the advantage of hindsight. And then, of course, I also have some footage to roll in as I talk about these items um, to see how things went on the trip. So let's get down to it. First off here, you see I have a 70 liter EMS pack here. This is the EMS Long Trail 70. It's a 70 liter pack. Um, I've pretty much retired this for summer and three season use. I've got a smaller bag for that now, but um, I used to use this during the summer. Luckily, I still have this because it's good in the winter. It's a whole nother ball game. So I went back to that 70 liter pack um, and let's get these out of the way first. These are hiking poles. These are something that is kind of controversial for three season. A lot of people call them sissy sticks or say you don't need these at all. Some people say, depending on the terrain, they can be great for stability. I am one of those people that usually keeps them just kind of strapped to the pack during three season use and available to me for water crossings or rocky areas. They can really help the knees and stuff. It's totally up to you, but I do enjoy them. These are just uh, some, these were probably 10 bucks a piece or something like that, 12 bucks a piece. Uh, Swiss gear. There are nicer ones out there, but these do the trick. They got a little bit of suspension in them. They got the plastic tips over there, which did come in handy uh, on the most recent trip because if you unscrew it underneath there, and you saw me do this in the video, if you watched the full length video, I did uh, take the tip off of this one here, and you can see it's got that metal tip. This is good for ice and slippery conditions because these plastic tips are just going to slide all over the place but in the summer you don't want to go busting up your tip so choice is yours that worked well for me so let's put these to the side we had a couple hiking poles pop these over to the side all right there you go let's start with the feet and work our way up uh, first things first some boots you're going to want some different boots most likely than what you use during three season um, you're going to want trade breathability for waterproofing and in my case i was planning on doing some snowshoeing so i took that into consideration too these are Garment, okay. GTX Snow is the model. They're a full length boot. I like ankle support and also during the winter, you wanna take into consideration snow getting into your uh, boots, etc. cetera. But um, there's something else that will protect you there. I'll get into in a second as well. But the boots, these are technically, according to the packaging, rated down to negative 30. Not sure whether or not I really believe that. Um, but in the temperature range I was in, which again was around, Realistically, 10 to 20 degrees. They did fine while moving or resting. So for me, in that temp range, these work good just for sitting around camp or for being on the move. Never got too hot, never got too cold. I liked them. Some things about this, you see the laces are nice and streamlined there. They don't have any eyelets kind of sticking out all over the place. That's the ease you getting in and out of snowshoes. There's also a D-ring right here, which made it very convenient to attach gaiters, which is the thing I'd said to get into. So let's get into that now. I'll show you those. These are gaiters. These ones in particular are by Outdoor Research. See a little OR there. Um, these are a great investment. OR is a decent brand, and these were still only around $20. Um, I found them for. They strap onto the bottom of your boot, as you'll see in the, in the footage from up there. That's how they look when they're on. Um, they seal around the boot, right? They stretch right over, the strap goes underneath, and they really seal things off. 
as was proven to me when my foot went into the water doing a water crossing, slipped off some ice, went up to a little below the knee, and I was still bone dry. So they seal really well to the boot. They save you from snow getting in there as well as the occasional um, foot going in some water. No guarantees there, but they're definitely going to increase your odds of getting out of that okay. So highly suggest a pair of gaiters. I wore these the whole time. They worked great. Okay, so that's that. Next up, let's talk about socks. That right there is a pair of EMS Mountaineering socks. Very nice and thick. About the thickest ones by EMS that I could find, at least in the store. They were comfortable. They were nice. Um, they're made out of a, uh, a nice wicking uh, material. They're not going to stay damp from sweat and whatnot. But speaking of that, in addition to these, also had a pair of these underneath. These are sock liners. I think these are actually inside out. But as you will see, they are made by uh, Carhartt. Okay, these again were not all that expensive either. Uh, these were like 10 bucks a piece. You get a two pack on sale for like 20 bucks. And these were probably a three pack for maybe 15 or something like that. And again, prices change. It is 2013, early 2013, but it'll give you a relative idea as I go through things. These are almost like a dress sock. They're very thin. They conform very uh, tight to the foot. And what they do is, besides adding extra warmth, because you know layers help with warmth, but these are good. A lot of people use these even in three season and summer because these will cling really close to your foot. So any slippage will be between this liner and your thicker sock. That's where the slippage will occur. Instead of with one pair of socks, the slippage occurs between your skin and the sock and that's where you get the irritation and then the fluid underneath and then there's your blister. So highly recommend this. Might even experiment with a lighter version of this during the summer, like I said, but for winter, definitely double up with some liners and some really heavy mountaineering socks. Did the trick. My feet were never really cold. Didn't have to use toe warmers or anything like that. Awesome. Moving on to this layer right at the skin, thermal underwear, all right. This is no name brand, something called Second Skin, I don't know, I got them for like nine bucks a piece, so a whole pair was like uh, $18. It's basically a synthetic version of your classic thermal underwear that you probably had as a kid when you went out in the snow and whatnot. Only don't use those because they won't evaporate sweat and wick it away as well. So get yourself some synthetic long underwear, shirt, and bottoms okay so i wore those then on top of that for pants i wore these ems pants that i got um, on clearance for whew, 14 bucks or something really nice like that these are usually 55 60. so i said okay fine 14 i can do that these are very similar if you've seen my uh, summer videos these are exactly like the pants by ems that i wear during the summer only difference is no zip no need for conversion i'm not going to turn these into shorts and they have a nice comfy fleece liner. So it's basically the same pants, but with a little extra insulation and comfort right there. Um, keep you nice and warm. Wouldn't wear these in the summer because you know you'd be you'd be sweating it up. But that's a nice nice pair of pants, and I was already used to that style, so there's my winter version. That's great. Next up, I had a Synthetic t-shirt. I did wear, now this is optional depending on how warm you are and your size and everything, but over top of the long underwear top, I also had a synthetic t-shirt. It's just like a Nike Pro Combat kind of workout, real tight fitting t-shirt. Again, synthetic, everything synthetic is what I'm using. Over top of that, this is kind of a mid, uh, medium thicker grade EMS synthetic shirt that I popped over top of the other two layers. So that's three layers on the chest there. And now let's move to the final outer layer, which is all about being waterproof. Water, res well, not even water resistant, but waterproof. For pants, didn't feel like spending the money. Those right there are just some synthetic material. Track pants that I got at like TJ Maxx or one of those discount stores like that. Um, again, 15 bucks, some <laughs> off-brand track pants. And all you gotta do is kind of you find the ones that have like the plasticky feel to them, and you'll see they're 100% polyester, and 
when you get a pair, I would suggest doing what I did. I just took it home um, and I went up to the sink and I just started pouring water on them to see if they would fail and they didn't. My foot or my uh, leg stayed dry. So they were, they passed the test and they came with me. So that goes on the outside and then you got your gaiters over top sealing the gap between the boot and these synthetic pants. Now you're pretty water resistant, close to waterproof on your bottom half. Then for top half, for water resistance. This I actually spent a little dough on because it's a jacket and I can see myself using this um, even when I'm not hiking. So kind of dual use. So I went ahead and did it. This is an EMS uh, men's Thunderhead jacket. These are good. It's not insulated or anything so that I can use this in other warmer seasons as a waterproofing layer. But underneath of it, I can just layer on whatever I need to. It's got some nice zip pit zips and stuff for breathability. So there's my waterproof outer layer there. And then I have one piece of variable gear that I took on and off as needed. And that would be the Montbell Ultralight Down Parka. Now there's an X-Lite jacket. And the main difference between the two is this weighs around eight ounces. X-Lite uh, jacket weighs around five. For the extra two to three ounces, what you get is some zippered pockets, and a nice hood, hence the name Parka. This compresses down really far, super light, obviously. As I kind of touched on in the video, it's not the end of the world if you don't have one of these. Kind of a luxury item, they're more expensive. But in my same theme with jackets, I can dual use this, um, even just in other applications other than backpacking. So um, did kind of make the plunge with this item, but I really like this. This is basically equivalent of having a heavy fleece or something with you and you take this on and off. If you're really trucking it um, at you know an average of 15 degrees, I found that once I started getting moving, I took this thing off and I was fine with just my um, base layers and the EMS shell. Um, if, if I was moving less or I was at camp, I pop this sucker on, just open it up. It'll fluff right up, put it on and you're good to go. Hat, just a regular old ski hat. And this is kind of some gear from hunting. This is like a neck wrap. It's almost like a scarf that just goes around your neck. It's reversible to be orange. Um, I also had an orange flag on my bag that I don't have here. It was just an orange vest that I put on because it was hunting season at the time. And when you're closer to the roads in the woods, you want to wear that depending where you are if it's hunting season. But uh, this was primarily for warmth. It kept it right around the neck. Once you get moving, this is going to come right off. But for around camp, great to keep the necks and the drafts out of your jacket. And then two more things that were on me. I had a headlamp on my pack that you'll see later, but this is a uh, Prion 2 flashlight. It only weighs a couple ounces. Without batteries, it's only, I think it's less than eight ounce. Goes up uh, very bright. That is my flashlight. It has a whole bunch of strobe settings and fancy stuff I want to get into. And then for a pocket knife, uh, the ubiquitous SOG flash that everybody's seen a million videos on. I won't get into that, but it's nice and plastic and super light. So that I find is good for putting on backpacking clothes because it doesn't bang around a lot. During the day, I like the style of a, uh, like a blink or something else. This is a little heavier, but for out in the woods and hiking, I like the lighter sock flash. One other item in my pockets, a Leatherman Squirt multi-tool. Now, believe it or not, in the lightweight backpacking circles out there, multi-tools can actually be quite a hot button issue. I won't get too far into that. You can do whatever you want. But me personally, this is part of my everyday carry. When I say something's part of my EDC, I mean that. Whether I'm at the mall or in the woods, this is with me all the time. Basically consider it part of my body weight. Uh, I also don't mind the idea of having some pliers out there for stubborn knots, maybe a zipper is uh, messed up. So that works for me. I also like the idea of having a backup cutting tool in case my primary gets lost, goes missing or dropped, whatever. A couple final items, a pair of mittens and nice thin lightweight, just keep it in the pocket, doesn't really weigh anything. Balaclava, make you look like a crazy person but it keeps the face warm. The mittens, these are uh, again something I got on sale but they're like a mid-grade Mitten. These are by EMS. I believe these are called the Altitude model. They also have some higher grades with a bunch of Thinsulate in them and stuff that are a lot warmer. That go up to you know $100, 150 and even more. But these were around like um, probably $40 or something like that. They're nice. They waterproof the hands. Mittens keep your hands warmer because your fingers are together. And inside 
is a glove. So you got a glove inside, so when I needed dexterity, I just pulled that out, and it's even got the little tips on there, so you can operate touch screens in today's modern society. So that covers all the clothing. Let's get into the pack. Virtually identical to what I took on that trip, with the exception of obviously I ate the food. It's pretty much everything I used. So, working our way through, let's get this out of the way. This is a Thermarest Z Light sleeping pad. I went with two sleeping pads on this trip, doubled up for the winter, worked out just fine. This weighs around 14 ounces, 13 and a half, something like that. Eggshell, dead simple, works well um, in the summer and in the winter as a secondary pad. Right. Unclip these, these are the snowshoes. Now, if you watch the video, you will know this as well. I didn't get a chance to use these. While there was a foot and a half to two feet of snow on the ground, it was pretty hard packed, and I never needed to bust these out, which kind of disappointed me because I really wanted this um, to get some snowshoeing done, but still, if I could do it again, I'd still bring them because you never know how the conditions are gonna change out there, especially when there's a lot of snow on the ground, it could be fresher powder than you anticipate, etc. It could really make the going a lot easier. There's other brands out there like Tubbs and things like that. So those are the snowshoes. This, <laughs> these guys right here added about five pounds to my whole setup. A couple pounds a piece right here. Total weight for the whole shebang, 32 pounds base, and then I had about seven pounds of food and water. Brought me up to 39 pounds total. This uh, attached to my hip belt is a insulator for water bottle, okay? It just velcros right on there. Let's take it off actually. Velcros right onto the hip or any other part of your gear that you want. I just wanted it accessible. I did not bring, uh, you know, like a drinking tube system because it would freeze. Unzip it. Got a standard Nalgene one liter in there. You notice it's upside down. That is on purpose and for a reason. You want to keep it upside down so that that thin layer of water that sloshes up on the lid does not freeze and make it a pain to open. If that does happen, just whack it against a tree or something, but there's my Nalgene one liter. During the summer, I don't bring these because this um, weighs a lot more than a regular plastic water bottle and I just don't bother during the summer carrying this extra weight. But during the winter, it's nice to have a little bit thicker for um, harder for the cold air to get to it and then even more important, importantly just durability if it does freeze or you have to beat it open on a tree it's going to survive that a lot more pouring hot water in and out of these from melting snow this isn't going to crinkle up a water bottle you pour some hot freshly melted snow into that and you're going to destroy your water bottle it's just going to shrink up 10 ounce weight compared to like a quarter ounce in the summer when you're carrying just that disposable water bottle let's get into the side pockets on each side I have these. These are micro spikes. These aren't terribly expensive either and they will save your butt. If it's not snow shoe conditions but there's any chance of ice or snow and you have these or I suggest you get them but if you know you just throw them in your pack yeah you're looking at close to a pound to have them with you but it's worth it. They strap right over top of your boots and they give you ridiculously nice traction on like even solid sheets of ice. Not the same as crampons, you're not going to climb Mount Everest with these things, but they are awesome source of traction without carrying big old crampons when you don't need them if it's overkill. So there's that. I either have this or the snowshoes. I ended up wearing these just about all the time. Never really took them off until it was time to get in the tent, obviously. You don't want to shred your tent, but I wore these constantly. Let's open up the little zip pocket on the hip here. My other hip pocket is empty. Okay, old snack wrapper. You probably don't care about that. Brunton compass, classic compass, just a couple bucks. This is nice. It's adjustable. You can adjust um, for magnetic declination, which is a whole nother subject, but depending where you are, you can adjust this so that it's nice and accurate. Keep that in your pocket. I don't care if you have a GPS or not, which I also had on this trip. I did have a GPS. It's actually not here. It's downstairs. It uh, belongs to my friend Mike's. I did have a GPS, but still have a compass and a paper map, people. What are we going to get to next? Let's, let's keep emptying out the small stuff. Okay. Backup water bottle. This is a platypus, one liter. You see how that really doesn't take up any space or weight. And um, I didn't end up using this, but depending on your situation, you can expand your ability to carry water very quickly and easily with that. So I always keep one of these around. Spork for eating, made by Light My Fire. Very light, I like this, use it all the time, all seasons. Ah, 
This I actually stopped bringing in the summer, but because I was using my equipment to melt snow and stuff, and instead of drinking coffee directly out of my cooking pots, like I do in the summer nowadays, I still brought this. This is a Sea to Summit expandable mug, and it also has the measuring, it's a measuring cup. It, it has the little marks in there all the way up to two cups so that you can measure uh, water for your dehydrated meals. About two and a quarter ounces. What else? Oh, uh, okay. Wires for uh, charging my phone off of the solar charger. I'll show you later. First aid action. I don't go too crazy. This is a very personal decision. You got to decide your risk versus weight uh, level, what you're comfortable with. But I just have band-aids, neosporin, some uh, disinfectant wipes, and minor stuff like that. I keep with me. And there's a little bit of super glue in there for uh, stopping bleeding on cuts and stuff. What other junk we got? Okay. Um, a mirror if you wear contacts and a pink one at that that you probably stole from your wife at some point because you had no other option and uh, now you're superstitious so you're forced to bring a pink mirror everywhere. Always makes for good comments. Your spare cell phone battery. Again, I had a solar charger to recharge but cold weather destroyed the hell out of my batteries very quickly and this basically I kept around for emergencies. Okay, so I always knew that even if I zapped the hell out of my battery that I had this spare one that I could pop in and get a little bit of time to try to find a signal if there was an emergency or something like that. So spare cell phone battery is probably worth a couple dollars. Repair kit for my other sleeping pad which I'll get into but just remember I showed you that. Repair kit. Credit card or it's actually a room key to a hotel um, that is wrapped in duct tape so you only have to take a couple ounces of duct tape. You can mend stuff, repair stuff without bringing the whole roll. Uh, pretty clever, not my idea. I actually stole that. I think I was watching a nothing fancy video or something and uh, I jacked them for that idea so I really like that. Credit card wrapped in duct tape. Just slip it right in the pocket. And a couple other items. Okay. Paracord. 550 I believe. Just have some random amount of that for hanging stuff in trees, um, doing whatever. I just carry some paracord. Okay, yeah, costs you a couple ounces, but you're prepared. All kinds of fire starting capabilities. I have waterproof matches, different spot in the bag. I also have this light my fire mini steel. Okay, probably just lit my bag on fire there. This thing's awesome for more conventional means. Then I have a uh, little Eddie Bauer lighter that was my dad's from years ago. It's still kicking. You see it twists together nice and waterproof. Awesome. So I got three different versions of fire with me. That's great. Oh good, an old cheese stick. That's probably good now, right? That concludes the small outer pocket. Also in there would be snacks for the day. Let's pop this sucker open and what else are we going to get into? Okay. That right there is actually a snow shovel. I really liked it. Now, being a little more weight conscious nowadays, I uh, attempted to get something called the Snow Claw. That is basically a flexible piece of plastic that only weighs a few ounces and you just kind of scoop away snow with it. It's got some ridges on it. I really wanted that. They didn't have it and as I said in the full length video, I'm glad they didn't because this guy expands out to a basically a full kick-ass snow shovel. It's got a nice coating on the blade. It slides through uh, even the hardened snow really nice and you're just shoveling. You're not breaking your back. I, I was able to dig a bunch of trenches really fast with this. So really appreciated having this along. It's made by a company called Camp. Not the most creative uh, name in the world, but that's them. It's just called the Camp Aluminum Telescoping Snow Shovel. Uh, again, uh, not a ton of money and I got it, uh, got it on sale for around $20. Anything else in the pocket? Yes. Okay, this weighs around, um, hold on, you weight snobs will probably hate this. Uh, five and three quarters ounces, but this works surprisingly well in the video. And it's a, it's just a Coleman. Probably get this at Walmart, nothing special. Saw, and it really zipped along pretty well without bringing a big old heavy ax or anything. I mean, I really wasn't too concerned with getting too crazy. It was just by myself, so it didn't make an elaborate fire to sit around. But that was nice. That concludes everything inside there. Uh, oh, with the exception of this, this is actually just a little cheap, like $3 thermometer. I found that it's off by a couple degrees, but I just threw that in there to kind of keep me uh, aware of the temperature when I wanted to. Anyway, yeah, that wraps that up. Let's get into here, moving along into sleeping systems. 
that big old sucker that's barely in there is a sleeping bag. Okay, this, this monster here is a Kelty Cosmic Zero. Uh, down sleeping bag. They have a synthetic version as well. This is the Down Cosmic Zero by Kelty. Now, I got into it a little bit in the video, but it is a 550 quality, uh, or a 550 power down. The lower the fill power, the less it compresses and the heavier it is. So, you can get the same, it's not like a zero degree bag, one's 550 and one's 800, the 800 one's going to be warmer. No, they both have the same rating, it's just that the 800 fill power one is going to squash down a lot smaller and it's going to be lighter. This big old guy here weighs 3 pounds 10 ounces, okay, so we're looking at close to 4 pounds, I mean you could get down to a pound, but you'd pay a ton for it, so it's really up to you. This is a pretty affordable sleeping bag, especially if you find a sale on it. So I really liked it, it was very comfortable, like I said, the downside is it's just not that light and you know, you can see it took up the whole bottom compartment of my 70 liter pack. But if you're not going as often or you don't know how much you're going to be into winter camping, I think it's uh, great for that. Again. This, for example, costs a lot more. This is an 800 fill power, and I mean, it squashes way down, but, and it's super warm at the same time. But, you know, that's, that's the difference. That was the sleeping bag that I went with, and I was happy with that. It did work. It went down. Supposedly, the low that night was four degrees. I don't know if it ever really got there, but I never had any problems with the, that bag. My face got pretty darn cold uh, hanging out of it, but my body was fine. So I'll call that a success definitely at least goes down to close to zero degrees. And I do sleep, everybody's different, I do sleep um, with clothing on. So, I mean, if you're somebody that's like, oh, I'm not gonna sleep in my uh, clothes, then yeah, it's probably not gonna go as low of temperature for you before you get uncomfortable. What else was back there? Spare bags, some dryer lint, and dryer lint with wax as a fire starter, okay? Okay, this is kind of a personal thing. You don't have to do this. These are solar charges. This is probably more applicable to me because I'm bringing up camera gear and trying to make movies and stuff, and I just um, want to have the ability to charge. But these are solar restores. Maybe you probably just need one, if neither. I don't know. I put a little Velcro double-sided tape on the back. I keep them in there because they're fully charged at home. If, I'm, if I wipe them out on the trail, I can affix them to straps on my pack like that and let them charge during the day. They have USB on there, and they also have a little emergency light that powers off of it. So, anything USB you can charge off of this. That wipes out the bottom section. That's what I usually use just for sleeping. Oh look, I found some batteries. Yeah, spare batteries. That's important. Let's get into this top pouch before I forget, okay? That's happened before. So I'm just going to let everything spill out of here and we'll see what kind of goodies we have. Okay, extra pair of gloves for around camp when I need more dexterity. These are just some waterproof uh, winter snow gloves. Okay, have a spare pair of those. You get your gloves wet, not good. This is going to make a lot of people cringe, especially lightweight guys. This is a pack cover, um, an Ultracell pack cover. This is the same one. I just bring it out of habit on all my trips, especially in the summer. Even in the summer, in three seasons, some guys will say this is a waste of weight because they just put a plastic bag as a liner inside their bag. To that, I will say one retort, just my opinion, it, once your bag gets wet, it's going to probably add more weight than this does in your pack. Um, just imagine if this thing gets sopping wet, it's going to weigh more. Just an opinion. I guess uh, the materials aren't going to soak up a lot of water, but this mesh and stuff will. So in the summer, I definitely carry one of these all the time. And just out of habit, I brought it. Just maybe not even habit, but paranoia that the weather conditions could change. I get some sort of wet mix or tons of snow on me. I just pop this on and it keeps everything nice and dry and free of snow building up in all the cracks and going down in here and stuff. It's just basically a snow cover for the pack. So I did bring that. That's totally up to you, though. Inside has another zip there so let's get into these goodies i'll roll through it real quick spare napkins and a little single use super glue tube okay headlamp this is a nano bite by p-tech really like this thing it's got three settings and the one setting is if you can even pick that up just a red beam super um 
low red beam. It'll last like 96 hours like that. This is great for in your tent once your eyes have adjusted. Uh, you can just keep this on hanging from the top of your tent and this is basically your tent light. And then also your light to walk around camp. Hand warmers, toe warmers. This is a personal thing that you may or may not need based on you. I definitely need them because I stick the toe warmers to my electronics, especially the camera that I filmed the video with to make sure that everything is actually recorded. Hand sanitizer, I find this great. You get some gook or tree sap on your hands, this will take it right off. Emergency space blanket, never know, never know. This only weighs one and three quarters ounce. I think it's worth it, okay? If things get too cold or something weird, you got that. And some wet wipes, okay? Okay, these are actually in designer purple, uh, just some <laughs> just latex medical gloves. Um, this can, if you're doing fine work where gloves just won't cut it for messing with a knot or something, you can at least keep your hands dry, okay? I think it's worth just having that possibility of kind of a waterproofing liner if things go awry. Finally, we're going to get inside the pack. First thing is a fuel canister. Use that with the stove that I'll get to in a moment. Um, this was a seven ounce, or I'm sorry, three and a half ounces of actual fuel, the jet, fuel, jet boil four season mix, and it did hold up. It did work, and I would say 15 degree temps. It, um, they say it's consistent down to 20 degrees. I'll give them that because it was struggling, but it did work. Okay, and it's got about a half ounce left in there because I weighed it before I left and came back, and uh, it weighs about uh, three ounces less now than when I left. So there's about a half ounce of fuel in there, but that last half ounce, it did, uh, it, it sputtered out and acted like it was dead because of pressure. It's all about pressure. The colder, the hotter something is, the higher the pressure, so the more the gas wants to get out of here. And when it's cold, it drops the pressure in there, makes it harder to get the gas out. That's, that's the big problem there. And as this gets less and less fuel in it, there's more and more space. So then you're dropping the pressure from the fuel running out. So once it got down to about a half ounce of fuel in there, you can hear it in there now that it's nice and warm, but once it got down to that point, it just gave up and died. But up until then, I got uh, a lot of good snow melted. Here's the stove. I already showed that in detail. This is really very similar to the video that I, or the cooks that I did on the other video only. I did use a side cut can opener so that the, the lid still sits there, unlike when you use a traditional can opener. And then I just put a thumbtack through there and bent it. And I have a nesting. I have two that are set up exactly like that. This whole thing, by the way, um, with everything you're about to see, I think was 10 ounces. I got some matches and some tin foil that can be used as a lid as well, but these are waterproof matches. And I have a smaller coffee cup. This is like could be a coffee cup and this I can cook ramen in. And then I'm not using alcohol stove. I have a whole separate video on this too, so I won't bother going into details. I'll just link it. But um, this is that uh, ultralight canister stove that waves, weighs in. Um, I forget the specific weight because I'm all out of my mind right now but it's pretty light. And then I got one of the mini canisters, not very cost effective um, to buy the smaller canisters, but they do way less. So this whole kit, the canister included, canister stove, two pieces of cooking equipment with lids and some matches, uh, weighed one pound, one ounce. So not too bad. I mean, the alcohol stove blows away in terms of weight, but pretty cool um, and just will be more convenient. Um, for me right now. It's just one less thing for me to worry about since I'm in the environment that I'm in right now. This is a regular water bottle. Not really advisable for winter, but I kept this buried in my pack and uh, kept another liter of water buried, buried in there. So I could have extra water, obviously. That one liter on my hip wasn't alone enough by itself. This is a little bit stronger Fiji bottle. They weigh about an, uh, maybe an extra three quarters of an ounce. This isn't what I actually brought, but I probably should have, should have because for winter this is more resilient. I just brought it even flimsier, um, like the Sani bottle, but there you go. But they will freeze and crack. Be careful with them. Okay, this, uh, this I used as my pillow, but it is actually an EMS day pack, packable pack. The reason I brought this was I used to, um, or I still own, an actual inflatable pillow. And then I started bringing this instead because for me, you can put an extra t-shirt in there or something too to make it even fluffier. But I can use this as a pillow. 
and for those of you who say it's not worth the wait to even have a pillow, I like having the ability to set up a base camp and still have a day pack that's nice and light. So this is dual purpose for me and I like it. So there you go. We're reaching in, next item. Oh, let's get this big old item out of the way, shall we? Yep. Some of you lightweighters are cringing. That is a tent, Kelty Salita 2. It's a two person tent. Went over it in the video. It is not a winter tent, it's a three season tent. But it did get the job done. This weighs about four pounds. That's pretty rough, four and a half actually pounds. I do have a hammock. A lot of you might be saying, why didn't you just use the hammock? I'll tell you the truth about why I didn't use the hammock. I'm not super experienced with the hammock yet. I can set this up almost in my sleep at this point. And I'm all about in, how many new in variables are you gonna introduce at once? I got this new, all these new variables from hiking and backpacking and setting up camp in the snow. Why combine that with the newer to me variable of a hammock? So it was worth the extra weight for me to bring something that I knew I could set up really quick and stress free to counterbalance the extra new challenges of being in the snow. For my next trip, maybe I'll add in, you know, uh, the, the hammock, you know, slowly add things until you're at a comfortable level. But yes, I did have a full size tent and this is actually good. Those days are really short. You're spending a lot of time inside by five o'clock. It's dark. Then you're just sitting there, especially if you're by yourself, you're not even going to bother sitting outside by a campfire and, and uh, you know, talking. So at least I had some room to kind of move around and read and stuff like that. Although I forgot to bring a book, but anyway, there's the tent. Okay, this is the second sleeping pad. This is an inflatable one during the summer. This is all I bring. It is the Climate Inertia X frame. I really like this. And combined with the Z Light, the two of these together, I put the Z Light on top of the X frame and then slept in the sleeping bag, obviously, on top, and I was good. Okay, I organize all my stuff in little bags. This is spare pair of socks, both liner and outer. Speaking of spares, uh, this actually here isn't spares. This is, let's get to that in a second. This is spares, spare underwear, uh, thermal underwear, top and bottom. You want that. In case something happens to you and you get wet, you want to be able to put on dry stuff. Now in terms of pants, did I have a whole spare hiking, pair of hiking pants? No, I didn't. What I did have was some sleepwear. Now again, some of you lightweight guys are cringing. Oh my God, you brought pajamas. Well, this actually is dual purpose. This is, here, I'll just open it up. Just some fluffy pajamas. They are not like synthetic and ultra dry sportswear, no. But I can wear these in the tent and be comfortable. Same thing with this, which is kind of a Nike, but just a soft fleece thin top. Again, comfy in the tent, something different to wear, but the, the dual use to this that makes it really important, these are spare clothes. If my other clothes get wet, it's not the best hiking gear in the world, but I could put the um, waterproof pants I showed you over top of these with my spare underwear, and I am now able to hike out of there. Also, I doubt this would happen in my environment, but if it got way colder than I anticipated, I could layer up with both of these items. So they're not just pajamas, but they're emergency clothes. That's something, you know, in the summer, I just, I hike in wearing the clothes on my back, sleep in them and everything. But winter is a different ball game. Yeah, and me personally, I just want to take precautions. Okay, we're getting close. Only two more items inside here. This is toiletries. Little uh, mini toothbrush. Travel size toothpaste that um, I'm a little crazy, but I just squeezed most of it out of there. I mean, how, how, how much do you really need for a couple of days? Um, I wear contacts. Spare contacts are there as well. And... Uh, this is just contact solution. No, that's not full. I just have maybe that much in there um, because, you know, that's going to weigh quite a bit. Liquids, by the way, like water, speaking of water, is going to weigh around 2.2 pounds per liter. So just something to keep in mind for liquids. And moving on from the idea of liquids and food, um, this is how I would organize my food, one bag per day. And then each day when the day begins, I would take the snacks out and put it into the back section so they're readily available for me throughout the day, maybe some of my pockets, make it easy for me to convince myself to eat. I'll do a separate food video, it's on my to-do list. Um, so I won't get too deep in this. The food's gonna run you about a pound to a pound and a half per day. Um, calories per ounce on food and stuff, I'll get into that in my food video. We will get there, but basically, that's, that's that. Now let me do a quick once over. I think we really did cover everything. 
Um, and like I said, I really did use this out there for uh, an overnighter in Vermont between 10 and 20 degrees, averaging around 15. This was perfectly comfortable for me. It got the job done. You might be different. You might have different comfort levels, different weight tolerances, but there you have it. So feel free to check out the other video if you haven't. You can see the full adventure. And until next time, I'm Syntax77. Have fun out there.